Hey guys, Will here and today we'll be setting up a video loop system using the Raspberry Pi 3 B+. This is basically a really miniature computer for a fraction of the price that you pay for a normal laptop or a standard PC. There's countless applications for the Raspberry Pi, but today we'll be turning it into a video loop system. Video loops can be super useful for art projects and prominent names such as Eva Koch and Bill Viola have used these throughout their whole art careers. They can also be super useful at trade shows where you're trying to show off a product demo or maybe you want to play your favorite movie on repeat in your studio space. The end result of this project will be a super low cost unit that you can plug into any screen that is HDMI capable with a power outlet nearby. The hardware you'll need for this is a wired mouse, keyboard, HDMI cable, 15 watt power brick to micro USB, a protective case designed to fit the Pi 3B+, a Raspberry Pi Model 3B+, a USB drive, micro SD card reader and micro SD card with a minimum of 8 gigabytes of storage. So I plan on looping one of my videos as an example, but before we can do that we need to set up the Raspberry Pi to be able to loop videos. That can be broken down into 5 simple steps. Step 1, downloading Raspberry Pi images software and downloading the operating system to a micro SD card. Step 2, connecting the Pi to a display, power and connecting it to a Wi-Fi network. Step 3 is installing the video loop software directly to the Pi. Step 4 is loading the movie files onto a USB drive. And finally, step 5 is to connect the USB drive to the Pi to start the video loop. To begin with, we insert the micro SD card into the reader and connect it to a USB port to make sure it shows up in the next step. Download the Raspberry Pi imager, which is what is used to flash an operating system to an SD card designed especially for the Raspberry Pi. There'll be a link in the description for each step to make it easy. Once that's downloaded, you select the operating system, in this case the Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, select the SD card, and make sure that there's no important files on this card before you do this, as this process formats the card, deleting all files from it. Then click Write. This installs a Raspbian operating system to the Pi, which is what we need to install the video loop software later on. Now eject the SD card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. Then connect a wired keyboard and mouse. And insert the HDMI cable to a display, and in this case, I've just used a TV. Connect it to power via the micro USB port. Lastly, I'll change the input using the TV remote in order for the Pi loading screen to show up. After booting up, you simply follow the prompts and then connect to Wi-Fi by clicking on the Wi-Fi icon. Selecting your network and entering your password the same as you would connect your phone or a tablet to Wi-Fi. To protect both the Pi's operating system and USB when you power it down, you need to set up remote access, either from your computer if you don't plan on moving the Raspberry Pi out of your home, or if you plan on setting it up in a commercial space, using your smartphone as the remote access to the Pi is also useful to safely turn it off without risking corrupting the data on the SD card or the drive itself. We'll be covering how to do both, so don't worry. To set up remote access on your PC or Mac, simply download Pi Finder. The link will be in the description for that. It's a handy tool specially designed to connect to your Pi on your home network via Secure Shell, otherwise known as SSH. Once downloaded and extracted to your computer, use Find My Pi to connect to your Raspberry Pi. Open the application and click on the Find My Pi button. Once found, it will show the IP address in the window just like this. Simply change the SSH password to whatever you changed it to during the OS setup then hit terminal to make the connection. If successful, you should have a screen that looks something like this. Awesome, now let's practice turning it off safely by simply entering the command sudo power off. It should power down and when it does, it just switch the outlets off and on again to reboot the system. This next part is if you plan on setting up the Pi in a workspace that isn't on your home network and you still need a way to safely power it down to remove the USB and or just keep your OS SD card in safe working order. Start by downloading the app named Raspberry Controller from the Google Play Store and click on the plus to add a device. 
Now disconnect the pipe from the wireless network and also disconnect your phone from the wireless network. Enable hotspot on your smartphone and connect the Pi to the same network exactly as you would a regular Wi-Fi connection, but make sure it's your hotspot network only. Open a terminal window on your Pi and enter the command hostname dash capital I to see what the IP address is for the Pi while it's connected to the hotspot network. Open the Raspberry controller app and click the plus to add your device. Simply enter a name for the device, the IP address which you can read off the terminal window and make sure the port SSH is set to 22. Enter the password you entered on initial setup of the Raspbian operating system. Click on the device once it's added within the app and scroll down to shut down device. This basically acts as a power button and once set up is very easy to use. You simply open the app and hit the shutdown device prompt to turn off the Pi safely without having to worry about possibly corrupting the SD card for the device. Now that we can safely power it down, it's time to install the video looping software. Again, use the Raspberry Pi Finder to connect to the SSH terminal. Once connected, enter the following series of code, followed by enter to install the video loop software directly to the device. You should start to see a lot of messages printed to the screen as software is downloaded and installed. Now run these two commands to finish the install. After about five minutes, you should see the installation stop with the message finished. Once the confirmation is on the screen, close terminal and reboot the Raspberry Pi which should lead you to this screen. Load whichever video files in MP4 format you want to loop onto a USB drive and eject it from the computer. Insert the USB drive into the Raspberry Pi and your videos will start to play with audio as well. And the beauty of this setup is there's only a very small delay between the end of the video and restarting the video loop. It's about 100 milliseconds. So you don't get the black screen at the end of the video like you do with most systems. So it doesn't distract the viewer when they're watching it. The benefit this setup has over say playing the video through a laptop or tablet is that it's quite low cost and easily hidden behind the display that you're playing it through, which gives you a bit more peace of mind when you're using it for a more commercial setting. This also frees up those other devices to be used elsewhere and just have this solely dedicated to playing videos. If you have any questions at all about this setup, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'll be hanging out down there to answer them. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech videos in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,